Hi everybody, welcome back to Rich Reviews. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard and today we're going to be filming again from Sarah Jane's Cafe in Chippenham, Wiltshire. Thanks again to the proprietors for lending us this venue. Very kind of them. Thank you. Today's video is going to be an interesting one. Today we're going to talk to you about me replacing the 993S with the 458 Spider. Do I regret that change? So in this video, I'm going to compare and contrast my viewpoints with regards to my ownership of the 993S and the 458 Spider. And of course, I'm going to talk to you about why I uplifted from the 993S to the 458 Spider. I'll be talking and contrasting views uh, be between Porsche and, and Ferrari, of course, because of the two different brands. But please don't feel that I'm saying that Porsche is better than Ferrari or Ferrari is better than Porsche. That's not the case. It's, it's these particular models that I owned and, and really the reason why I, why I changed from, from the 993S to the 458 Spider and my thoughts of that change now that I've had the, the 458 Spider for over a year. So I initially had a Boxster S back in 2002. I bought the box dress from New, it's a very highly spec box dress, and I bought that from Dick Lovitz. So that started my relationship with Dick Lovitz, which, is, which has always been very good, as you know. I love that car, and that's where actually the number plate come from, because that's when I bought the number plate, R1CHB, which I, I get vilified for quite a bit. Um, it, you know, it's my name, Richard Brown, go figure. You know, people think it thinks the obvious other things. So I put the box dress in 2002. I was going to upgrade to a 996 Cabriolet, and I actually put a deposit down on a 996 Cabriolet with Dick Lovitz. But then I saw a 993 Targa in a town close to me and I just loved the silhouette of the 993. The, the shape of it was just stunning and that just put doubt in my mind with regards to the 996. And so I decided that eventually, approximately about nine months later, I decided to cancel my, my order in for the 996 Cabriolet and I decided to chase and, and to try and find a 993. Different things were happening in my business at the time. Um, so it became uh, not quite the right time to financially extend myself to buy the 993. So I ended up waiting a few years. Um, and in 2008, I found the right 993 and it was a 993S and it was black on black. So it was, it was the perfect combination. And <laughs> downstream from that decision, it was so right to buy that car because of how much it, it increased in value because of the type of car that it was, the wide body Carrera S and because it was black on black, metallic black with a black leather interior. As you know, I held that car for 12 years and had it from 2008 to 2020. Now the longest I've ever owned the car is 13 years and that believe it or not was a triumph stag for all my pains. So I had the 993S for 12 years, which is nearly as long as I've held, the, you know, had a car for um, in my whole lifetime. So you can see I really love that car. And you can see from the videos and content that I created on the 993S, that was a very special car to me. And I, I doted on it, you know, it, was, it ended up being a garage queen. For the first year or so, I drove it quite a bit, then it end up, ended up being a garage queen. Um, and I, I did a lot of work on the car in 2017 and 2018. The whole suspension was refurbished, the car was detailed, uh, it was fully wrapped, um, clear PPF um, to, to seal in the quality of the detailing that was performed by, by Ted. 
Ted was the detailer who did the work on the car and his company is um, the devil is in the detail so if you ever want a fantastic detailer I cannot recommend him enough the devil is in the detail search him out on Facebook or on YouTube he has a channel on YouTube as well and on the internet so Ted did a great job on detailing the car and, and as you know um, from the videos if you haven't seen the videos on the 993 S there's a whole playlist check out the playlist below and as you can see you know we started the channel with the 993 S so you see, you know, maybe you think I'm wooden now, but Christ, you look back at those videos then, I was wooden, you know, and I thought, yeah, I'm great, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a saying that you should, on YouTube, you should you should knock out, a, a, you know, God knows, a, a set amount of videos. I think they say, chuck away your first 12 to 15 videos, because they're gonna be pretty crap. <laughs> and probably that's the case for me, but because it's got the 993 in it, and because now I've sold the 993, I don't wanna throw those videos away. So I'm gonna do some comparisons between the 458 Spider and the 993S. And again, this isn't comparing Porsche with Ferrari, this is comparing those two, um, the ownership of those two cars. So I had the 993S until 2020. Now the decision to sell the 993S was a very hard decision. I'd had that car for such a long time. I spent a lot of money on the car and you know, that car really got into my heart. You know, I, I really love that car. My son liked it as well, but he wasn't so enamored with it. But for me, I'd had that car for all those years and I'd had it for a nasty divorce as well. And that matters quite a bit that I'd managed to retain that car for a very unpleasant divorce. So it, it was something that I clung on to through, through that period that that was a, a, a positive thing in my life at the time. And and something that I was really pleased to be able to keep hold of. And of course, it, it was damn it quadrupled in value downstream as well, which is, you know, a fantastic situation. Very, very fortunate. My son and I also bonded with that car. We did many, many shows with that car. Um, before we, we before we started the channel, we were going to Dick Lovett's Cylinder Club events. We also took the 993 to a commemorative event, a 25th anniversary party with one of my friends, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. He's a subscriber to the channel. There was all sorts of cars and shows that we, that we took the car to, you know, a lot of events with uh, Porsche Region 16. Hi, Elaine and Stuart, also subscribers to the channel. I'm trying to get across here, hopefully I am, that it was very hard for me to move on from that car. It was, it was a massive decision for me to make to sell that car. But at the end of the day, you're only on this planet for a short time, you know, for men, four score and 20, they say. And as you get older, you start thinking, well, you know, I haven't got the means to have a big garage. Um, subscribe. <laughs> but I haven't got the means to have a big car garage um, and I don't believe financing everything up to the hill. It's just the way I've been brought up. And it's not to say it's not right for other people, but it's just not right for me. You know, my son and I were talking about this. Do we want to keep the 993 until I die? You know, do, is that it? Is, are we going to keep the 993 forever? And although you know, that was a great car, a lovely car, I always wanted to try a Ferrari. I always wanted to try a brand, a Ferrari brand. And you know, the red car, as they say, was beckoning. And we've been to loads of car shows, loads of eclectic car shows, not just Porsche car shows, but eclectic car shows with many different marks. And of course, we've seen loads of Ferraris. I had fallen in love with the 355 as well at that time. And for many years, I contemplated to and fro or swinging, you know, shall I buy a 355? But the 355 is a steel body. Do I want a steel body car? Yeah, the 993S was a steel body car, but the 993S was built like a tank, those 993s. They had 35 years of engineering in, in the mechanicals of those cars. Um, you know, it was, it was hard to move away from that car into, into another brand, or into another car per se, but into another brand as well. I wanted a Ferrari and I say for the 355 was beckoning to me, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't resolve in my mind the cost of maintenance because of the, the good old engine out maintenance. And even though they say, yeah, it's not as expensive as a lot of people think, it's still expensive. So we decided, okay, well, if I'm gonna buy a Ferrari, which one is it to be? And um, I made the decision with my son. My son actually um, came up with a re recommendation, first of all, um, to go with a 458. And we always wanted a drop head car because um, the, the 993 we'd driven only in good weather. Therefore, we we're always out in the sunshine with it. And we just thought, well, we're always out in the nice weather with it. Um, so, you know, maybe the next car should be, should be a drop head, should be a spider version. Around that time, we watched Sam from Seen Through Glasses um, video on, is now the right time to buy a 458? <laughs> and so that it all aligned. We were thinking about a 458 and then we watched that video and it just started to set it more in our minds. So thanks, Sam. We've actually met Sam before as well. Very genuine guy and he comes across that way on his videos as well. So there, there was loads of positives with the 458. Um, obviously Ferrari 458, what's not to like, you know, or what's not to love about that car. If you get the car at the right time, if, um, you know, so 2014 or 2015, they stopped making them in 2015, then you can have some of the, some of the years of the service pack left. 
obviously buying from a dealer you get the actual power warranty as well they call it the new power warranty now you can get the new power warranty on ferraris for cars that are are within 14 years of age so those are major benefits you you know you're buying from a dealer so you've got a trusted dealership that you're buying from um, I decided it was always going to be Dick Lovitz. I started a, a very good relationship with them and that relationship progressed through to actually purchasing the car, to purchasing the car. And, and I was very fortunate in getting the car that, that I ended up buying. I'm going to do some comparisons of my ownership um, in, in some different sectors. Those sectors will be quirkiness, styling, handling, build quality. And I'll come to a conclusion at the end of my overall ownership of those cars and you know, was it a good decision? I'll, I'll come round to the fact of, okay, was it a good decision that I made to replace the 993S with a 458 Spider? So let's talk about styling. I always loved the styling of the 993S. It's got that Coke bottle design cues. Very familiar 993 styling. Everybody knows what a 993 looks like, even though the perception is they've never changed. Of course they have. If you look at the, the very early models all the way through to the all the way through to the 964, the 993, the 997, 99, the 996, the 997, the 991.1, 991.2, 992, etc., etc., etc. They have changed drastically, and the 993 was a substantial deviation from the 964 with regards to engineering and body styling. A lot of the panels were actually uplifted and were, were changed on the 993. And I love that curves, the curves of the 993. Just exceptional, you know, there's, there's no hard edges on that car at all. It's just beautifully styled. It's just, it's just a thing of beauty. Um, and you know, the engineering on that car, you, you close the door and it, it, it thuds with a clunk. Nothing sounds like that. When you close any other door on any other car, nothing sounds like a 993, especially an air-cooled 993. And that was the last of the air-cooled. And as I said earlier, it was, it was the, the last of the range of air-cooled with 35 years of engineering and the mechanicals of that car. That's why that car was rock solid. I could put that car to hibernate for six months, and I regularly did, and I could fire that car up come the end of winter and it would fire up first time. The car was, was beautiful, you know, with, with, that, with, that, with those real sleek curves. You've got to be careful with those rear haunches because they're substantially wider than, than the front of the car. Now comparing that with the 458, it's just totally different. Yeah, with the 458, you've got the curvatures as well. Thankfully, those curvatures aren't broken by, by um, induction vents for the intercoolers. You know, it's not for it's not force fed so with the 458 not being force fed in other words not being turboed you don't have to have those those vents on, on the rear haunches which i've never liked and i know they're essential requirement on the 488 on the fa etc etc um, but i've never liked that design um, so thankfully the 458 is clean lined all the way until it gets to the back where it's got the ventilation requirements for for the for the radiators etc on the back of the car so You've got that sleek lining on the 458 as well, but you've also got those angular sections on the 458 as well, which give it, give it that purposeness. And the 993 has those, has those sleek curves. It doesn't have that angular section, so it doesn't have that purposeness. And you just have to look at the stance of the 458. It's, it's, it's quite low set, even though if you look at the wheel arches, there's quite a gap between the, the, between the tires and the top of the wheel arches. And that's because that's how Ferrari designed the suspension on the system. A lot of people slam them down lower. They put lowered coils on. That's not necessarily a good idea. You know, Ferrari designed these cars like that for a reason, but fair enough, they look better when they're lower, but it's got to compromise ride. And it's got to compromise the suspension setup that Ferrari provided. And this is why if a car's been slammed down and it goes in for a service with Ferrari, or it goes in to, have to, to go onto their warranty pack, the first thing they want to do is convert it back up to the designing standards for the suspension because that's where it should be. That's what Ferrari designed it to be. So the 993's, you know, hit that sweet spot. You know, it's got that, got that lovely compactness to it. Um, almost chuckability, you could say. But of course, you know, with the 993, you've got that, that handling capability where you can put the performance down as you come out of corners. You do not want to lift as you're coming into a corner or during the corner. You do not want to lift because you get that pendulum effect or you could get that pendulum effect. But coming out because you've got all that mass and grip over the rear wheels, accelerate hard coming out of a corner and they, they perform fantastically. So you get the, the, the anything that you lose coming into a corner where you have to lift before the corner, um, so you're not lifting it during the corner, you gain with the, uh, with the mass over the rear wheels, the extra grip that you get accelerating out hard out of a corner. So let's talk about build quality, 993. Built like a tank. <laughs> 
The sound, as I've said, of the doors when you close them, that clunk, that thud, nothing sounds like it. In the 993, you feel like you're in, in, a, in a, something cast out of an ingot of steel. It's just solid, you know, built like a tank. So you, there's no comparison. None of the Ferraris compare to the build quality of a 993, in my opinion. And I love the Ferrari, I love the 458, but it just doesn't compare in build quality. So I say that knowing that the 458 build quality was a substantial leap forward from the predecessors, you know, from the 360 and from the 430 and, you know, the cars before it, the 355. 355 being steel, obviously downstream they went to a, they went to an aluminium space frame with the, with the 360 and then on to the 430 and obviously to the 458. So the 458 is a substantially better build quality than say the 430, say for example, the last version of the 430, of course, being the Scuderia still had issues with its joints. So the 458 build quality is a lot better than previous models, but it still hasn't got the build quality of a 993. And you think about that 993 is what, 20, my, my 993 was 24 years old now, I think it is. And 97, you know, that, that uh, my 993 was made, my old 993, I should say, it's not mine anymore. The design of the 458 is perceivably 14 years old, you know, they would have designed it around two, 2007, 2008, around that time. So the design of the 458 is 14 years old. My particular car is seven years old, it's 2015. And, and so they come from very different eras of design, but you know, Ferraris were never fantastic for the build quality. And famously, you know, with the 993, they say you could always lean across and you could touch the other side, you could touch the other door, which you could in a 993 being very compact. And with the 458, yes, you've got more room inside. You can't lean across and touch the other side of the door for sure. The 458 styling is, is very much classic supercar. And the styling is still relevant to, to modern day Ferraris really. Have, not much has changed. It's only with the very later models. The, it's only with the, with the Roma and the SF90 and of course the upcoming 296 that you've got a substantial change to the interior of the car. So to finalize the build quality sector, the 993, incredible build quality, the end of 35 years of design engineering, the 458, was the beginning of exceptional build quality um, for Ferrari. It couldn't really compare to the 993 with its solidity. It's just not the same. It's, it's just designed in a different way. It's a diff totally different type of car. Being a supercar, it's got to be lighter. It's got an aluminum chassis and aluminum body. And the 993 obviously is, is steel chassis, steel, steel body. The 458 has exceptional build quality compared to earlier cars. And like I say, the 458 is the beginning of a new era for Ferrari for mid-engine supercars. Touching a little bit on quirkiness, the 993 is very quirky, especially on the interior. Um, you, you know, with the 993, you've got, if you can call it a quirk, you've got the engine, so the mass of the engine hanging out of the rear axle. So it's, it's a rear engine car. Anything rear of the axle is rear engined. Anything forward of the rear axle is a, is a, is a, is a mid-engined car. Um, and you can, you can have a front mid-engined as well if it's, if it's behind the front axle. If it's over the front axle, then it's front engine. So the 993 you know, it obviously has that quirkiness, quirkiness with regards to the engine hanging out of the back of the rear axle. And that's obviously caused loads of problems. They had to design around that. The 458 is a mid-engine car. It's a mid-engine supercar. The 993, the quirkiness on the, are mainly on the inside. So the, the, the real comparisons we can do here between the two, because you can't really compare any other areas because they're so vastly different cars. You can, you can compare the quirkiness of the interior of the 458 with the 993. And with the 993, it's famous for none of the buttons being placed in the interior in any logical format. For example, you know, a lot of the gauges are blocked by the steering wheel, by that four spoke steering wheel that you have in the 993. Yeah, you can see the rev counter center, you know, that's, that's the predominant place where, where a rev counter should be in a supercar and a sports car. But any of the controls that you want to try and reach, you can't see them, you know, you've got to take your eyes off the road to try and feel them, see where they are. And, and even though, you, you know, I'd had that car for 12 years, you're still out to look and think, where the hell are those buttons? And you'd be reaching for the air conditioning buttons, etc. Um, it's, it's, you know, they're not at hand and they're not in the logical place. And also in the 993, you've got the lift um, button, which is down near the actual glove box open, if you've got lift optioned on your car. And again, it's not a logical place to be in. And I always have to look down because I always forget, is the lift button on the right hand side or is it the glove box on the, on the right hand side? Which is which, you know, because they're next to each other. I always have to look. It's not logical. They should, the glove box button should be next to the glove box and the lift button should be probably 
right in front of you where you can see it clearly so that when you're driving forward and you're coming up to say a police sleeping policeman you don't have to take your eyes off the road you can press the lift button while it's still in your peripheral vision and so that you can action that button to be able to raise the lift and I believe that is what takes place that is I believe that is how it's been designed now on later models also yeah, do, do we can do a comparison with the with the air conditioning and a 993 air conditioning usually um, because of it obviously not being water cooled um, the air conditioning works on and the heating system works on a, on a different process so the heating system works on heat exchange from the exhaust system and the air conditioning obviously works from air conditioning unit the air conditioning and and the heating on those cars they say you either have a good one or you don't and if it's a, if it's a bad one it's always going to cause you problems on mine it was a good one the heating was always good and the air conditioning was always good and the and the buttons always laid themselves to hand once you knew the 993 and 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 how to control and how to use the air conditioning buttons it was very logical very very easy to use and it worked exceptionally well the 458 it's all over the place. As I said before, you know, if you look at the quirkiness of the interior video, see below for, for that video or for a link to that video. It's, you know, it's not logical in how the air conditioning works. It's quite easy to switch it to hot air. You just turn the temperature up. But the air conditioning, you know, and the zoning, you know, you switch one button and you think it should switch one side off. It doesn't, it doesn't. It switches the other side off or, or you can't switch the driver's side off. And it, oh, it's all bizarre. You have to actually turn the fan right down. To switch the system totally off as well it's really bizarre setup it's not logical at all it has been changed now for the later models it was still sort of similar to the in the 488 and the f8 but now in the sf90 the roma and of course the up and coming 296 they have actually changed that design um, so there is all that quirkiness that quirkiness does exist in the ferraris and and it obviously it clearly did exist in the 993s you've got to love that quirkiness in the 993s with its classic interior design and with regards to the 458 it's got that classic supercar design interior it's just stunning you know the 458 interior is stunning and i love the interior of the 993s so i love the 993 interior for its classic styling and i love the 458 for its supercar styling it's definitively supercar so I love them both, but for very different reasons, um, but both fantastic interiors. So now let's talk about the handling. Probably not a good comparison to make because everybody knows about the 993 or the earlier air-cooled models of, of Porsche with regards to handling. Um, yeah, with the 993, they designed a lot of the rear weight bias out by actually implementing a multi-link suspension system into the rear of the car. Um, and that did overcome a lot of the problems, but you were always very wary that you mustn't lift um, when you're turning the steering wheel because you cause major problems. And before I had all that work done on suspension, now, yeah, the suspension would have been getting worn on the 993, but before I had that work done, before I had the whole suspension renovated and in effect the car lowered to RS spec plus 10 millimeters, it was always light on the steering wheel. I always said to, 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 the, to the mechanic who worked on the car, it feels like it's trying to kill me around, you know, over 70 or around, let's say 70, <laughs> around 70 miles per hour. It always got super light on the steering. Um, and you could make quite a bit of difference with putting more fuel in the car because the fuel tank was in the front. And obviously it add more weight to the front of the car. Um, so crazy, it always felt unbalanced and it always felt um, like it just wasn't stable. It was very scary at, sp at speeds, the, the 993S, until I had the suspension uplifted. As soon as I had the, the suspension uplifted and, and renewed and it lowered down, totally changed that car. It became a lot better, a lot more decisive on the road, a lot more planted um, and a lot heavier on the front of the steering because it had a lot better weight bios because it wasn't high and it wasn't catching the wind to pull up. And also I had the rear wing removed from the car as well. It had a, um, it had a, a, rear, a turbo rear spoiler on the back of the car and, and that tended to sort of act, even with the car suspension how it was um, not quite right, it tended to sort of act like a push down on the rear and pulling the front up and making the front up even lighter. Um, at speed so yeah that that wasn't a good feeling you know it was it was a worrying feeling when you when you pushed on with that car like I say until I had the suspension renewed totally changed when I had the suspension renewed and it was a lot more planted the 458 it's like it's on rails You have to have a serious problem with the suspension and the and the and the steering on that car and the tires um, for it not to feel like it's on rails if you're not new to the car. Yeah, once you get to know the car, then obviously you can push it harder and you get to see little nuances like um, or they can be quite substantial nuances to change into Michelin Sport tires, for example, as a way away from the, the um, Pirelli P0s. 
that makes quite a substantial bit of difference. I haven't done that yet, I'm still on Pirelli P0s, but the performance I'm getting from those tyres are fine, you know, I'm only driving the, the car in good weather anyway, so um, those tyres are working out fine. But the handling on the 458, you know, the, the capability of the car is, is far superior to my capability to be able to push it to anywhere near its limits. You go around the corners, there's quite a few times I've gone into corners quite fast carrying a lot of speed and I thought, holy hell, I'm not going to freaking get around this corner. And yeah, I've obviously I've stamped on the brakes, but the car's just gone round. It's just like it's on rails, you know, that's Ferraris for you. That's Ferrari supercars for you, modern Ferrari supercars. So the handling is fantastic on the 458. It's far superior to the 993. Even when, the, when, even when the suspension was sorted on a 993, but, but these cars are from different eras, so it's not really a fair comparison. But I thought I'd just talk about the handling anyway, just to throw it in there, you know. Um, with regards to the 993 as well, I should re-establish again that one of the great benefits of having that engine over the back is you've got all that mass over the rear axle. So when you're coming out of corners, don't lift coming into corners. As I say, that's the last thing you want to do on, on an air-cooled 911. But as you're coming out of the corner, so you're hitting, coming out of the apex of the corner on a 993, you can accelerate hard coming out and the car just digs in sets itself back and it's planted and, and you can accelerate away. It just grips, you know, very hard to break a 993 away at that point when it's got all the mass over the rear wheels and, and, and it will really pull you around out of the back of the corner and fly you out of the corner. With the 458, it just goes around on rails, you know, um, it just corners on rails. It's just, it, it makes you seem a lot better driving than you actually are. Don't switch it on race mode in the wet. I tried that, <laughs> I got away with it, but it can bite you, so so it, it has it it can spin out if you're not careful. Even, even though the 458 is only 562 brake horsepower, it still has enough brake horsepower to push the wheels away. There's nothing compared to today's horsepowers of 1,000, 1,100, and, and high. You know, I mean, crazy crazy horsepowers these, these uh, modern cars have, modern supercars have. It still has enough horsepower to catch you out, so be careful. And being a mid-engine car, you always have that slight concern that because it's mid-engined and you get a certain amount of ground effect um which you know you, you do have aerodynamics on the on the 458 definitely you know with its styling and with the rear diffuser and the front spoiler and splitter you do have aerodynamics working on that car that helps suck it to the to the road you can feel it when you're driving it but it's always a worry that if that aerodynamics gives way, if it loses its if it loses that capability and and you're going at enough speed then it's all bets are off, you know, you're not going to be able to recover it because you'll be going at such a pace then that you're not going to be able to recover the situation because um, because the car's just going to, be, going to be carrying too much speed into a corner. So it's always in the back of my head and I'll never be able to push that 458 to its limits because I'm just not a good enough driver and I don't really want to, to be honest. I, I, I like driving the car, I love, I love the styling of the car, uh, the balance of the car, the smell of the car and the feel of the car, the whole ambience of the car you know that's that's what I love about that car so the, so even though it's not really fair to compare the handling of it I've just given you some insight there into the different nuances of, of the two different cars um, like I say the 458 can bite you if you put it into race mode and it's a little bit damp and especially you know with the Pirelli P0s as well and um, we that was when we we're going on to um, when we we're going to the Top Gear event if you you probably missed that you you know if, if you haven't watched the Top Gear video or even if you have Check the bit where I'm driving in, when I'm driving towards Dunsfold Aerodrome, because I had it in race mode and it, it glitched. You'll see me go on the steering one. You'll see my face go <laughs> a little bit ashen, <laughs> where I'm thinking, holy shit, I got away with that. <laughs> so, so you may have missed that. Check that back on the video, you'll see. 
I've linked to the video below. There's some nuances on the different handling of, of, the, of the two cars. And, and you know, obviously the 458 is going to be far superior to the 993. Totally different eras of engineering, but different characteristics between the two cars. We're going to get on to speed now. Now, obviously, you cannot compare a Ferrari 458 supercar against the 993S sports car. You know, totally different eras. My 993 was built in 1997, so it was built 24 years ago. Probably be a little bit older than that. Um, my 458 Spider is a 2015 car, it's so seven years old. Um, yeah, the, the engineering on the, on the 458 was probably set about 14 years ago. And the 993S, as I say, it's got 35 years of engineering in it. So that was that the design of the engineering of, for the 458 would have been, um, you know, a lot earlier. So the 993S has a 3.6 litre boxer engine. Obviously, it's, it's rear engine biased and it's air cooled. It's, um, it has only 185 brake horsepower. And it's not to 62 is drum roll 5.4 seconds at the time that was fantastic at the time that was that was performance so that's not to be sneezed at remember you're talking about 1997 and that's incredible performance for that era and then the 458 spider is is as the name suggests a 4.5 liter it's circa 562 brake horsepower so the 0 to 62 on a 458 is 3.4 seconds some people say 3.2 some people say 3.6 but we go with 3.4 seconds so you can see there 0 to 62 differences 5.4 3.2 there's just no comparison you know you're talking about um, a 1997 3.6 liter air-cooled engine compared with a ferrari high performance 4.5 liter um, 2015 engine, you know, so it's, it's, it's very different designs, very different things. You're not really comparing eggs with eggs, as they say. The performance on the 458 is is incredible. You know, it's, it's far superior to the to the 993. There's no doubt about that. And the performance on the 993 was 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 cool, was good. But you know, my Abarth would even out accelerate the 993s. So you see, you can't really. Again, the Abarth is from a more modern era, so you can't really do that as a comparison against the 993, but that, that shows you there in itself the advancements that you've got in technology. Now, my Abarth is a 1.4 litre, 1.4 litre turbo, and it would accelerate the 3.6 litre of my 993S. Go figure, you know, that's, but that's modern advancements for you. So coming round to some conclusions. Both cars have exceptional styling, but for different reasons. You have the Coke bottle design of the 993, sleek curves. It's the definitive 911. Everybody knows the shape of a 911. The 458 has, again, its curves, but a lot of angular purposeness in its design. Ferraris are no longer designed by Pininfarina. So um, the 458 was the last of that batch. Um, you know, that's a, that's a sorry way to go. And you've got the 488 and the F8 still take on the cues of the 458. But the 458 is the one that was styled by Pininfarina. It was the the later cars, the 488 onwards, they're actually styled in house. So you know, it's a it's a it's a it's a farewell to that styling as well with the 458. So an end of an era there too. Power is no contest. Uh, the 458 will obviously trounce the 993. With regards to my ownership, that's obviously been a, a was a big positive for me for buying the 458. Um, in, in the ownership of having that car, it's far superior in performance than, than the 993. So, you know, when I take when I take the 993 out, it was more for the styling, more for the ambience of the car, which is fantastic. You know, as I say, I love that car. There's no doubt about that. That will always be in my heart, that car. But you didn't drive a 993's performance, not when you compare it to modern day supercars or modern-ish supercars. The 458 has everything, has the styling, has the performance, has the handling. You know, you take that car out, you can drive it slowly and just the sound, the smell of the car, the feeling of the car, the drivability of the car. You know, you, you get all that from driving it slow and then you hit the accelerator and you get it all. You get the sound, you get the performance, you get the styling, you get the smell, you get the ambience. You, you get, just get everything with that car, you know? And that's why people want the 458 and, as opposed to the forced induction cars of the 488, F8 and, and um, SF90, etc. downstream. This is why people love the 458. It's just everything. You get it all together. It's, it's a sweet spot. It's a definitive sweet spot. And I really hope that when I moved across to the 458, I really hope that all the, everything that I read about the 458 being the sweet spot Ferrari, I really hope that was true. It is true. It is really is a sweet spot. So the 993, the end of the air-cooled era for Porsche. The 458, the beginning 
of the reliable mid-engine supercar range and the last of the V8 naturally aspirated engine cars. That's a very important factor. So answering the question, did I make the right decision replacing the 993S with a 458 Spyder? For me, definitely yes. It was time for me to move on. I'd had the 993S for 12 years. Yes, we'd created about as much content as we could for the channel, but it, it wasn't all about the channel. I wanted to own a Ferrari before I left this mortal coil. And the 458 was the right way to go for me. And, it, and that decision has been proven to be correct. They both have their, their, their places in my heart. The, the 993 will always have a strong place in, in my mind and in my heart, but the 458 gets lodged in your heart and soul. It only takes one drive. It took one drive with that 458 and I was sold and I, I haven't looked back. So I'd be interested to know your perceptions. Do you think I made the right decision? Let us know in the comments below, please. What would your decision have been? Would you have changed the 993S for a 458? It'd be very interesting to see your views. Drop some comments below for us, please. If you enjoyed the video, also please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. We've got some great future content to come. If you're not subscribed, then please think about subscribing and we'll catch you in the next video.